Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Brief. Israelis escape terror at least one time every day. That's what the numbers tell us according to the Shin Bet, Israel's internal security service. In fact, they say that last year the service thwarted more than 560 terror attacks in total, including 10 suicide bombings, 4 kidnappings, and 300 shootings. This number is also just a bit higher than it was in 2018, when the Shin Beit shut down 500 attacks total. During an annual ceremony, Shin Beit's chief Nadav Argaman announced that the big goal, however, is to overcome the threat of Iran, which has time and again threatened to wipe Israel off of the map. To that end, the Shin Beit says that over the summer they busted up an attempt from Hamas and Hezbollah to recruit Arab Israelis as spies for Iranian intelligence. However, a majority of those captured in schemes are considered to be lone wolves. Meanwhile, more suspicious balloons were discovered near the major central Israeli city of Beit Shemesh, and it turns out that the balloons were filled with explosives while donning a little Palestinian flag. This method of terror started up in 2018 during a series of Palestinian riots at the Gaza border, but they've not been as prominent in the last six months, so Israeli police are again asking the public to raise a red flag if they notice any suspicious-looking objects, even if they're just reporting what appear to be innocent little balloons. This is Auschwitz-Birkenau a Nazi camp built for just one purpose, the murder of undesirables in Hitler's Germany, and in particular over 960,000 Jews, 865,000 of whom were gassed to death upon their arrival. Well, on Thursday, Israel is set to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz camp with the fifth annual World Holocaust Forum at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial. There's just one problem. Survivors aren't really on the guest list. Just 30 of the 800 seats at the event are reserved for survivors of the Holocaust, with another 30 reserved for their escorts, and many critics have taken note. Former Haifa City Council member Yaron Hanan, for example, says that his mother, who survived Auschwitz, was neither invited nor able to get a ticket. Yad Vashem, however, explains that in addition to being incapable of inviting all 100,000 or so survivors in Israel to the event, the event is not a public ceremony, but rather a gathering of leaders. And the guest list does include many heads of state, including United States Vice President Mike Pence, Presidents Putin and Macron, and dozens more. Still, it's estimated that only a few dozen survivors in Israel survived Auschwitz and are healthy enough to attend. And at a Holocaust memorial event, it's fair to say that perhaps survivors are the most important guests, especially with their numbers dwindling by the day. Now, once again, Prime Minister Netanyahu is reshuffling his ministerial cabinet as he's being forced to resign from his multiple ministerial portfolios. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't he already do that? Well, yes and no, because several of his new recommendations have failed to materialize. Now, until recently, Netanyahu served in five different posts in addition to being prime minister, but he's being forced to give them up due to criminal indictments. So first, he gave the foreign ministry to Likud MK Israel Katz last February after which he then gave United Torah Judaism's Yaakov Litzman a promotion to Minister of Health, and he nominated M.K. Tsipiotoveli to the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs. But the remaining two appointments have been troublesome. Likud loyalist David Bitan was recommended for Agriculture Minister, but he's since withdrawn from the running over complications with his own potential indictments. Then Deputy Finance Minister Yitzhak Cohen withdrew his own nomination for Minister of Housing, when his nomination was indefinitely delayed. So replacing them now is Tzachi Anegbi as Agriculture Minister and Regional Cooperation Minister, and Ophir Kunis, who will head the Welfare Ministry as well as the Ministry of Science and Technology. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and to subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.